Today I am officially 39 weeks pregnant. I've been finding it a lot more beneficial to me to really not be thinking about the due date, trusting my body and trusting that everything is working out. It's been so lovely to document this last few weeks. I can't believe we're so close to a whole new chapter of my life and hopefully to have some of you along with me on that new journey. Today I am officially 39 weeks pregnant. The baby is the size of a pumpkin today. And we actually just had a midwife home visit. So I've mentioned a couple times that we were considering the possibility of giving birth at home, kind of more so thinking that I would labor as much as I could from home and then potentially transfer to the hospital. As I was talking with my midwives, they were just kind of saying, it's not a bad idea for us to just come scope out your house just in case you feel more comfortable at home. We just wanna make sure that everything is kind of like in place, we have enough room to move around, set up all their supplies. So we did that today and I actually asked to be checked, which I was debating on doing because from what I've heard, some people really don't like to be checked, especially leading up to the due date because if you find that like you're not dilating at all, maybe it could be a bit discouraging. For me personally, I was just like curious to know, you know, has there been any progress? I've been feeling a lot more cramping recently, like maybe just kind of trying to see where I was at. I fully had it in my head that I was like at least a centimeter or two. It turns out that I'm not. I'm still not dilated, which is fine. I'm only 39 weeks. I'm still not even at my due date yet. It's just kind of obviously nice if you've like progressed a bit. Two positives though is that my cervix is like in the right spot. So it's facing where it needs to face. And she also said that my cervix is really soft, which is what they want. She immediately asked, she was like, have you been doing the evening primrose oil? I was like, yeah or at least I've been trying to, like I haven't done it every single night. And she was like, yeah, I can tell, like things feel really soft and that's really good. That's what we wanna feel. So that was a bonus. And honestly, before deciding that I wanted to get checked because you definitely don't have to get checked, I just, said to myself like I'm not gonna feel any type of way I'm not gonna be disappointed or like get anxious if I'm not you know one or two centimeters dilated and I honestly like feel fine about it for me it's just curiosity to see where I'm at and also another thing that they've continued to tell me throughout the process is it doesn't necessarily say anything about how fast you'll progress or whether or not you'll go into labor at a certain time. It really is just like information if you want it. I know so many people who have gotten checked and it's like maybe they're not dilated at all, maybe they're like one or two centimeters but they go into labor that evening or the opposite can be true where maybe someone's dilated a bit and it still can take a long time. And I think that's why a lot of people don't even want to get checked at all because you don't want to get in your head about, you know, what that means about where you're progressing and everything. And I totally understand that. It was definitely really nice though to have the midwife here and just scope out our room and make sure there was room for everything. She gave us some tips on how to set things up. Happy to report I slept all of maybe two hours last night. It wasn't anything really like baby discomfort related. I just could not fall asleep. I had so much energy. Also, one of the things that I mentioned I've been really struggling with these last few weeks is like congestion. Whenever I lay down, I just find it so hard to breathe and it's really annoying. I'm gonna tint my eyebrows today because I feel like it. You probably already know the drill by now. Just for men, beard and mustache, mustache and beard. Mix that up. This I just bought like separate from the tin kit because if I'm expected to use this <laughs> to apply it, that just will not work. Also, I feel like my skin looks really bad right now on the camera. My skin honestly hasn't been that bad throughout pregnancy, but it hasn't been the best. I feel like that could also be though like moving to a new climate because my skin behaves so differently when I'm in BC versus Ontario. Obviously Ontario is a lot colder. I just find that my skin gets a lot drier. You can see here I have some redness. And also we discovered that our water softener is broken so the water is very hard where we live. I see that when some people do this they put Vaseline all around their eyebrows to avoid staining their skin and to be honest I have never done that and I've never had an issue with my skin being stained but that's an option. While that's marinating and yes it's going to continue to develop and look really weird so just bear with me. I'm going to make my little red raspberry leaf tea concoction. This was just brewing in the fridge overnight. 
why did I pour that into this jar? That was unnecessary. Okay, I'm just gonna add lemon. And, <clears throat> and then a few drops of stevia. Mix it around. Delicious. Okay, and now we rinse this off. I just use like a wet cotton pad and I don't wash this out just in case I want to do a little bit more, which sometimes happens. I don't think I'm going to do that today. So there you have it. I saw this woman make Greek yogurt pancakes on TikTok and I've been making it almost every single day. So I'll show you the recipe. I'll also leave her video in the description box. I always want to say show notes because that's what I say for my podcast. And then when I'm on my podcast, I always say description box. Greek yogurt, I do about two scoops. And when I say scoops, I mean spoonfuls. And then two eggs. One thing I've really noticed about myself as I've been documenting more of my life is how weird of a concentration face I have. I actually cut a lot of it out because I'm self-conscious. Whenever I'm like doing something and not conscious of my face, it's not a good look. I have my Greek yogurt and my eggs and before I do anything else, I just whisk those together. And then two teaspoons of baking powder. Baking powder? Yes. I feel like this recipe is very forgiving. It's kind of the whole point. Splash of vanilla extract. And then just add in some flour. I think it's like roughly about a cup, but I don't measure. And then I just add milk to get like the right consistency. This is usually the consistency that I go for. What I've learned with pancakes is that you can't get too hasty and flip them prematurely. I am impatient and therefore I frequently try to do that and I always end up messing them up. Okay, there you have it my friends. That doesn't look the greatest, but I assure you it tastes good. Are you kidding? That looks really good. Really? Yeah. And of course, fresh Canadian maple syrup. If you are very observant, you'll remember that we purchased this in a former vlog at the farmer's market. Uh, why do you all of a sudden become like kind of robotic? Pardon? If you remember this, we purchased this at a previous vlog. Have you seen yourself <laughs> speak on camera? Okay, taste test. Mm. How would you describe the texture? It's not like a typical bready. It's like a thick crepe. It is. That's what it's like. A thick exactly crepe. Exactly. Like so if you like crepes. Tastes the same. Texture's the same. And that's just it. This is today's outfit and I'm very pleased because I completely forgot that I had these white linen pants and they have a really lovely drawstring and as I was doing my closet organization last week I remembered that I had them so that's one more thing that I can wear. We're just about to go thrifting. We went thrifting yesterday and actually both of us had really good luck. I have had this sweater on my wish list for a while now. I really wanted a size large and it was sold out and it's also a bit on the pricier side for me for a sweater. Anyways, I was browsing and I found this, which is like almost the exact same in my opinion. A nice like v-neck, red, bright pop of color. I've also had trench coats on my wish list kind of for the spring i love like a long jacket i've really been getting into them and i found this which again pretty much exactly what i was looking for it's so funny too because sometimes i'll find something secondhand and it's like $30 and I'm like, ooh, well, that's a little bit steep, but I was fully prepared to pay like $150 for it new. Anyways, I'm really excited about that one. I did also find this denim shirt, which I don't have a denim shirt, so I've been kind of looking. I, for whatever reason, did not look at the back of the shirt. So I think I'm gonna be returning that today and we're gonna go to another thrift store that we didn't go to yesterday. I find that I have the best luck thrifting when I sort of have something in mind and I haven't really had anything that I've been looking for the last few times that I've gone thrifting. And so it's kind of more just like random and I'll just end up getting things that I'm like feeling not that great about. Also, when we got back from thrifting yesterday, I was like partially convinced that I was starting to experience some labor symptoms. Funny enough, we just kind of like frantically started 
cleaning the house and like prepping things which is probably for the best because there are a few little things that we were putting off um but needless to say <laughs> it was a false alarm either way it's nice to be prepared so we have our little birth supplies here this is the kit that our midwife gave to us they also asked us to pick up some paper towels and extra garbage bags and then just an extension cord and then to have like a laundry basket ready and again these are things that we won't necessarily need if we go to the hospital but i feel like just for peace of mind it's nice to just have everything here just in case and know that we'll be like super prepared for either scenario okay we are back from thrifting i would say it was pretty successful probably very successful on par with yesterday Item number one, another red fuzzy turtleneck fleece. And the nice thing is, is that this fits both Jamie and I. So that will be good. This Pepsi needs to wash. fleece, that she kind of sick. I exchanged that denim shirt that I got for another denim shirt without <laughs> the Looney Tunes on the back. And it's like a nice oversized fit. The other one was also a little bit too small. My leash. <laughs> Second, we've got these nice blue pants i've been looking for a pair of pants like this for like six months and the ones that you're wearing right now jamie got a pair of like perfect condition carhartt fleece lined just Winter. in your size yeah for like 30 dollars. and last but not least just a standard pair of new jeans and now we're gonna go on our daily winter walk it's not too cold out today like what minus well, it says it's like minus five no. Does it feel that cold? No. Once again, for the second time in this video, I fully thought I was going into labor last night. I've mentioned a few times that I've been having like different sensations, more cramping than usual, especially when I go on walks. But last night was a little bit different. I was laying in bed just reading my book and then all of a sudden I started to feel really like hot and nauseous and my stomach was like really tightening and then I started shaking a little bit, which that hasn't happened before like anything i just try to stay off google and just ride it out and get some rest because i think my initial feeling when i get any of these labor-ish symptoms is i'm like okay like gotta hunker down gotta prepare really the best thing i think for me is just to rest because if i am gonna go into labor that evening I need to be rested and energized. The overthinking the symptoms that I'm having, I just haven't found that to be super helpful. The shaking only lasted about five minutes. The nausea went away, so I kind of just tried to get some rest and actually ended up getting a very good sleep, which I haven't been getting a ton of recently. But yeah, we're kind of back to normal today. I've started to notice a lot more symptoms in the evening or like after I've kind of been out and about. And we've just kind of been relaxing today, taking it easy. We are going to go on a little walk with my family in about an hour. I also have to show you some new things that my mom gave us. First of all, we have these little hats. These are probably the cutest thing. I just love anything with little ears. I don't know why. I find them so endearing. I think I had told my mom that at one point too and she remembers these things and she'll make them. Like months later, I'll forget that I said I like something and then she'll give me these little hats. Also so adorable. I think she called these bloomers. They're like little I don't know like underwear I think you could just put these over a diaper when you have someone in your family or like maybe multiple people in your family who are really good at knitting and like my sister's really good at crocheting I am so hesitant to ever buy knitwear like that because I know that they're so good at it and they love to make that kind of thing so it's honestly just been so nice also our due date is in two days which is crazy i can't believe it but to be honest and i may have mentioned this before i've been finding it a lot more beneficial to me to really not be thinking about the due date at all thinking about you know counting down the days overthinking like when's it gonna happen because i just kind of feel like in these last couple weeks of pregnancy it's a lot of kind of pressure and like anticipation i am just really trying to stay grounded and just know that things will happen when they need to happen and just staying present. I think it can be hard because understandably so a lot of people want to check in with you, want to know if there's any updates. Meanwhile, like day to day, not a lot is changing in these last couple weeks. It's really just a waiting game. What I've found to be most helpful is just to keep myself distracted, keep active. That's been really helping me. And again, to just know and feel confident that things will work out on the timeline that they need to and not to put pressure on it and not to feel discouraged if things aren't like moving as fast as I expected them to. I saw this pin 
maybe a few weeks ago and it said something along the lines of like pregnancy and your baby will teach you how to be patient and I've definitely found that to be true because I find that with most things in my life there's a certain level of control that you can have over how things unfold that's not really the case with pregnancy and when the baby comes and I won't lie sometimes that's a little bit uncomfortable but it's definitely a lesson that I'm realizing is very important to learn trusting my body and trusting that everything is working out that's what's made me feel the most calm and grounded good morning I am about to make myself a little breakfast I think I'm just gonna have yogurt today and then I think I'm gonna go to the library we have this puzzle that we got that is due or maybe overdue did we ever actually crack open the puzzle no but I want to go return that and maybe see if I can pick up some other books obviously I have my kindle but sometimes it's nice to have like a physical book I just finished the book good material I had mentioned that I was starting it on Instagram at first I was like really unsure if I could stick with it because it's a post breakup book and sometimes I find it's so hard to read people like unraveling the secondhand embarrassment but honestly it's really really good and it is heartwarming in a way that I didn't expect. I've heard really good things about her book. I believe it's called Everything I Know About Love. I think that she, at least in this book, just writes relationships and the nuance of relationships so well. She talks about breakups so well and I don't know, I really really liked it. I highly recommend that book. What I'll then often do is look at similar books on Goodreads and read those. So the one that came up is called The Rachel Incident. I also go through these phases where for some reason I really like reading things or even like watching shows that are set in like England or Ireland. Another one that a friend recommended to me, it's another Irish book. It's called Kala, K-A-L-A -A, I believe. So I've added that to my list. All of the books I've read this year have actually been fantasy other than good material and I kind of wanted a little bit of a break to just read a romance. Also I got this trench coat the other day at Value Village and I'm still not sure how I feel about it. It's a bit boxy in the shoulders but honestly I'm trying to just like challenge myself to wear different types of things so I do think I'll keep it. Obviously tomorrow is our due date. We have a midwife's appointment tomorrow. And then I think because I haven't gone into labor yet, I'll just schedule another couple of appointments for the next week or so. At my last appointment, I was checked and I hadn't started dilating yet. My hope is that we've made some progress at tomorrow's appointment. But again, I really am trying to just go with the flow and I feel pretty good. I don't feel rushed. From what I've learned about due dates, they're pretty arbitrary to begin with. I'm really just not that stressed about going a week or so over. I think it's also pretty common for the first pregnancy to go over, but with the 39 weeks coming to a close, hitting my due date, I think that I'm going to wrap up this video and this series. It's been so lovely to document this last few weeks. I know I didn't document my entire pregnancy, at least not on YouTube, but I really have enjoyed sharing the last few weeks. It's been really nice to kind of have check-ins and to hear some of your experiences and to just connect about, you know, this experience of pregnancy that, as I mentioned before, sometimes feels very lonely, but ultimately that so many people go through. We'll continue to share different aspects of my journey as they come along. So that is it for the third trimester diaries. I can't believe we're so close to a whole new chapter of my life. I really am so excited for that chapter and hopefully to have some of you along with me on that new journey. So I look forward to that. But yeah, that is the end of this video. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next one.